Guys, it is the best time of year. We are hatching and raising baby praying mantises. If you're new here, my name is Emma. I am also known as the Urban Botanist. You can follow me here on Instagram or here on my personal channel. And I love talking all about nature, insects, plants, of course. I love discovering this beautiful, beautiful place that we call planet Earth and taking you along with me. A little bit about me, I studied biology and specifically entomology at Carleton University here in Ottawa. So I just love bugs. Honestly, I love anything that is green and growing. Guys, I am so excited. If you know, you know I am absolutely obsessed with praying mantises. I am obsessed. I also plan on going live on YouTube when my praying mantis egg starts to hatch. So make sure that you turn on the notifications bell so that you do not miss a thing. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about praying mantises, their life cycle, what they eat, how to hatch an egg, how to hatch it successfully, safely, how long they live for, what to feed them, and how to set up your hatching chamber. And if you're not sure how to get started with your own praying mantis egg sac, I will leave the details in the description of where you can pick up your own live insect hatching kit on the urbanbotanist.ca. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video if you are thinking of hatching praying mantises this season. The OG urban botanists remember the very first time that I hatched a praying mantis egg sac. So I did something that any normal sane person would do and I bought two praying mantis egg sacs, obviously, and I didn't expect them to hatch this soon. I also expected them to be secured in the container that I had them in. I was wrong. They are literally everywhere. Oh, we have a casualty. Oh. Oh, I fucked up. Shit. Oh my God, they're fucking everywhere. <gasps> Oh, fuck. In my house, it was a complete and total disaster. Like it feels as though I have dealt with them and got, you know, 50 out the door. And then I turn around and I see 50 more. They're just everywhere. And you would think that I've learned from my mistakes, but I have not because I think at least two or three more times did I make the exact same mistake again, which was not hatching in a safe and responsible way. <laughs> what that ended up looking like was hundreds, yep, hundreds of praying mantises all over my house. Oh, this is not good. Oh, this is really not, really not good. Oh no. They were supposed to stay in here. Oh my God, they're literally everywhere. There's hundreds, there, oh, there's hundreds. Like it was a complete and total disaster. It took days to usher them all outside into my garden. So I'm going to show you how to safely hatch them and also talk about why I'm hatching praying mantises in the first place. Okay, let's first start out with what is a praying mantis egg sac. This is also called an othica or an egg case. Essentially, this is what female praying mantises lay at the end of the summer. So kind of in September in the fall season. And there are up to 400 tinier eggs within this egg case. So this isn't like one single praying mantis egg where one will hatch out of it. On average, one egg sac will hatch 40 to 200. I know that's like a really wide range, but that's realistically what you're looking at with one single egg. What happens when the egg hatches is all of these praying mantises will come out and evenly disperse over one to two hours. One thing that you can do is if you don't want to hatch your praying mantises inside, which I completely and totally understand because it can get hectic and out of control, is just hatch them outside. You just need to make sure that you are placing them at least two feet off of the ground. Your praying mantis egg sac will come in this like mesh bag. You can just stick it onto a branch Make sure that there's some foliage, some leaf litter for babies to hatch into and seek refuge, have shelter, and also begin to hunt. So hatch them outside if you're not sure about hatching them indoors. Make sure that you are hatching it in a praying mantis safe chamber. This is the one that we include with our hatching kits. This is like 
foolproof, they are not getting out of this. However, if your praying mantis egg sac produces like 200 babies, you can't leave them in here for all that long. You're gonna need to go out and disperse some of them into your garden. Because praying mantises are naturally predators and they're carnivorous, they can also be cannibalistic, you need to make sure that you're giving them space and food, otherwise they'll start eating each other. This is what I recommend. I'm going to add a little bit of leaf litter. This is just a piece of foliage that I've clipped from my garden so that when they do hatch, they kind of have some shelter. They have, you know, some recognizable elements to their space. You want to kind of build like a little mini ecosystem. This is almost like a little nursery for your baby <laughs> praying mantises. Something you really want to make sure that you are doing is attaching your egg to a stick. Just something where the egg can sort of naturally hang off of the stick. So you can use something like just some wire and attach it to your stick. This stick that I have has some like natural lichen and moss on it. So I've just kind of like placed it in the moss like that. And even this will work just fine. When you are selecting a hatching chamber, you do wanna make sure that the holes are really, really super small. Like this is what I had used in the past and they were even still escaping out of these tiny little holes. So right now my egg sac is in here to kind of show you like, don't do this because this was not as foolproof as I thought it was because believe it or not, those praying mantises are small enough to escape out of these holes. So definitely go with something that's a little bit more secure. So something like this is, is great. Okay, let's talk about what they eat. When your baby praying mantises first hatch, they need food. They also need water. So make sure that you're putting a little source of water. It can be even a bottle cap with a little bit of water in it. That is perfect. They're going to need that hydration and they're also going to be really hungry. So if you plan on hatching them in your chamber and wanting to hold on to a few for a little bit, you'll need to feed them. And baby praying mantises love wingless fruit flies. And you can, believe it or not, buy wingless fruit flies for really, really cheap at most pet stores that sell reptiles. So call up your local pet store and ask them if they have wingless fruit flies. And keep in mind that even though they are wingless, they will get unless you have a chamber like this where they are literally no chance of them getting out. I put wingless fruit flies in this and you best believe they escaped out of these little holes too. If you don't wanna deal with feeding your praying mantises, no worries, hatch them in here and then release them outdoors straight away. You're really gonna to have to keep an eye on your egg sac to ensure that you are not leaving them in here without food for too long. You're probably wondering how long does it take for a praying mantis egg to hatch? And it's usually about four weeks from when you receive it. However, keep in mind, if you want to extend that hatching time, maybe you need a little bit more time before you want your egg to hatch. Or you're like, I really don't want it to hatch just yet. I'm going away to the cottage. And if they hatch while I'm gone, that's gonna be an issue. You can simply just place that egg sac in a fridge. Don't put it in the freezer put it in the fridge and that will delay hatching. Essentially what prompts these egg sacs to hatch is the right temperature and the right amount of daylight hours. Basically circadian rhythm. So nature is nature, it will do its thing. There's really no timing exactly down to the day when your egg sac will hatch. For me in the past, it's been like a difference of even weeks. So I can't tell you for sure, for sure when they will hatch, but it's approximately four weeks from when you receive your egg. Another thing you're going to wanna do is in the mornings to encourage your egg sac to hatch is just give it a little spray with regular water because a little spritz of water not only adds a little bit of hydration, it also simulates morning dew. So it will really, again, encourage those praying mantises to hatch from their egg. Okay, let's talk about praying mantis life cycle and how long these things are going to live in our backyards. So if you're hatching your praying mantises and putting them outside, they will live all summer long, essentially up until the first frost. Adult praying mantises die at the first frost. They do not survive the winter. But what the females do is they lay an egg so that the next generation is able to hatch the following spring. However, if you want to keep a praying mantis as a pet, which a lot of people do, they can live up to a year and sometimes even a little bit longer. 
and you might be wondering why I hatch praying mantises at all. Like, why am I doing this? Why are they beneficial? Why should they be in my gardens? Are they invasive? Like, all very valid questions. So the species of praying mantis that I'm hatching is local to my area. It is not considered native, but it is also not considered invasive. This species of praying mantis right here, or the Chinese praying mantis, was introduced to our ecosystems here in Southern Ontario. Please note that we are not selling these praying mantises and shipping them to regions where they are not considered native. We're not trying to damage ecosystems. We're trying to boost biodiversity and support ecological systems by introducing insects as opposed to using harmful pesticides, which is why I like hatching praying mantises in my gardens on top of the fact that they are just super badass bugs. So your praying mantises will eat aphids, any hard or soft bodied insects. They eat Japanese beetles, they eat caterpillars. They are an apex predator and they eat a lot of the bad bugs that are in our gardens. One thing about praying mantises is they really do pick one plant to sort of live on and they're really also quite territorial. So when you do release them in your backyards, make sure that you're spreading them out amongst multiple garden beds, multiple areas of your backyard. I always like to place my praying mantises when I'm releasing them amongst as many shrubs as I can. Like I'll even put them in this flower basket here. I'll put a couple up here on my herb gardens just to give them some more space. I'll even put them down in my like lettuce bar here. Shake a little bit in your hostas, shake a little bit here. That will ensure a higher probability that more of them will stick around because otherwise they really will disperse and find their own space to ambush hunt because like I said, they are very territorial insects. From my experience of releasing like 200 praying mantises in my backyard, I typically find that I'll be able to watch at least 20 of them for the first six to eight weeks of them being in my backyard. I'll see them go from this tiny all the way up to about this big. And then I'll start to see less and less of them. They're either eating each other or they're realizing, hey, there are way too many other mantids in this area. I'm gonna go find a new area. And then by the end of the summer, around September, these things get huge. Like they really get so big. I'll only typically have one, maybe two max in my backyard. Wow, this is easily my most favorite insect. Like, I hope that helps to answer your questions on how to hatch praying mantis egg sacs or uthicas. And I really hope that this experience of hatching praying mantises brings you closer to nature and gets you more excited about bugs. If you do have questions about insects, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel to watch my entire journey of hatching and releasing and raising praying mantises in my backyard, especially if you plan on raising your own because I am here with you for the entire journey. So let's raise our own baby praying mantises together this season. It is so fun. It has literally become like my favorite part of the summer. Once again, make sure that you are subscribed. Follow me on Instagram so that you can see daily and more regular updates and all the other crazy stuff that I get up to. I am at The Urban Botanist. You can also follow me on my personal account at Emma Tara. and we will see you in the next video. Happy hatching!